Welcome! In this session I would like to explain to you how to use Windows PowerShell to create folders and associate access control lists to these directories. Before I start, I need to make sure that you have the following. It's not necessary to have an Active Directory server, but in my examples I'm using Active Directory accounts to set access control lists. We are going to create home directories and uh, group directories. Therefore, it would be a good idea to uh, do this on a file server. However, this is also not a necessity. You will need to have a full understanding on how to work with aliases, variables, loops, operators, the pipeline, the if statement, handling errors, and you need to know how to import Active Directory module if you don't have it installed on your computer. If you are unsure or you would like to refresh your memory, please visit one of my earlier sessions. The first commandlet that we're going to look at is a test path. Uh, with this commandlet we can see if a directory exists or not. To use the commandlet we need to specify the path. The proper way of doing this is specifying the file system, colon, colon, and then specify the path to the directory. To do less typing, we can achieve the same by only specifying the path uh, to the file system without the file system colon colon attached to it. If we need to create a directory, we can use the new item commandlet. We need to specify the path where we would like to create the directory and set the type to directory so that PowerShell knows that we want to create a directory. If we want to delete or remove a directory, we can use the remove item commandlet. We need to specify the path of the directory that we, we would like to delete. Since it's a directory and it may have files or subfolders within it, we need to specify the recurse property. And to uh, avoid con um, confirmation pop-ups, we specify the confirm with false. The alias for the remove item is rm. Therefore, we can just specify rm so that we don't have to type too much. Access control lists are a list of permission attached to an object. They are also known as ACLs. Each entry in the ACL is called an ACE or an access control entry that, is, that specifies what the object is allowed to do on the Windows file system. In Windows PowerShell, we will create an access rule object to set the ACEs or access control entries and the, these rules are set with an access rule permission that specifies what the object is allowed to do. These access rule permissions are set up like this. We need to specify an object. This can be a user or a group in the identity reference. Then we need to specify the file system rights that is what the specific, uh, specific identity is allowed to do. Then we need to specify the inheritance flag. We need to specify the propagation flag. And then we specify the ACE type. File system rights that are very common are delete, modify, read, write, and full control. There are a lot, of more, lot more system rights that can be used. Here's a list of all the actions that can be associated to an object. If you are interested in viewing what they are, please pause this video to get a decent look at them. In the inheritance flag, we can specify how the ACE should uh, inherit. Um, we have the container inherit. The ACE is inherited by child containers like subfolders. We have the object inherit. The ACE is inherited by the child object like files. And we have the none if we don't want to specify any inheritance. In the propagation flag, we can specify how the ACE should propagate. Inherit only. The ACE is propagated to child objects. No propagation inherit. The ACE is not propagated to child, child objects. Um, none if we don't want to specify any propagation. There are two types of access control entries. Allow access to an object or deny access to an object. 
To get access uh, control list information for a directory, we can do so by using the get acl commandlet and specifying the path parameter. So it's get acl path and then the path to what the file or folder that we would like to get. If we want to set ACLs, the first thing that we need to do is to set an access rule. We need to create an array or variable array uh, with the following, the identity reference, in this case it's the administrator, the file rights, we are setting them to full control, then we are setting the inheritance flag, we are setting it to can container inherit and object inherit, and then the propagation flag we are setting to none. The ACE type we set to allow. Then we need to use the new object to create a system security access control file system access rule from our array variable. Once we've done that, we can use the set ACL rule method to set the ACE. This process only sets the ACE and not the, AC, the, the complete ACL. To be able to do this or to set the ACL, we need to use the set ACL commandlet. We now specify the path that we would like to associate with the ACL with, uh, <clears throat> and specify the ACL object parameter with the ACL rule that we have created earlier. So it's set ACL, the path to the file that we would like to set the ACLs on and the ACL object, this is the file rights that we've set or the ACE that we've set earlier. Another thing that is useful is to remove the ACL inheritance of a directory. The way to do this is to use the set ACL rule protection method. The set ACL rule protection method has two properties that can be set and they are is protected which can be set to either true or false. True to protect the access rule associated with the object security object from inheritance and false to allow inheritance. And the preserve inheritance can be set to true to preserve inherited, um, inherited access rules, false to remove inherited access rules. This parameter is ignored if the is protected is false. Here is an example of removing the inheritance from a directory. First, we need to use the getACL to create an ACL variable. Then we can use the set access rule protection method on that ACL variable. And we are setting the is protected flag to true and the preserve inheritance flag to false. To remove access, uh, ACLs that are not inherited, we can use the purge access rule method um, to remove the ACEs from a directory. We first of all need to create an ACL variable. We do that by using the get ACL with, path, with the path of the file or folder that we would like to remove the ACLs from. Then we pipe the access method on the ACE, uh, ACL variable to a for each object loop and then purging every access list entry by specifying the identity from the pipeline variable. Okay, let's wrap this up with a couple of examples in PowerShell ISE. Okay, I've opened Windows PowerShell ISE in administrator mode. We need to have administrative rights to set uh, access control lists. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to create a user object with my Active Directory user account. And I'm also going to take my DNS root of my Active Directory domain. Then if you are using a web server or a file server, you should be specifying a backslash backslash the name of the file server, the name of the share and the directory that you want to set, um, set up. In my case, I'm just going to create a directory of a local uh, a local directory. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to check if that path actually exists. And I'll do that with a test path and then specifying the path to the directory. There we go. And you can see that it does not exist. And I've written an if statement 
that if the path does not exist, it should create it by using the new items, a uh, new item commandlet, specifying the path to the directory, and then specifying the type as directory. And I'm just writing uh, to the host just to show that we've actually created a home directory for my user account. Okay, next up, we are going to set ACLs or work with ACLs. The first thing that I want to do is I'm going to get or create an ACL variable um, with get ACL and then specifying the path. Um, up next, I'm going to show you how many ACLs are actually or ACEs are actually associated with that ACL. I can do that by counting the access rules and I'm just specifying for each object and then uh, using the, the pipeline variable and then the access method and the, the, the access property and the count to show you how many um, that there are five ACEs associated and we're just going to get the ACE for the built-in administrator so I am doing that by piping the get ACL to the for each object, getting all the access rights on that. And then for each identity reference, I am searching or I'm saying where the object is built in administrator. And this is what the ACEs look like. So the ide um, identity reference is the administrator account. The um, file system rights are set to full control. Then we have the inter inheritance flag that is set to true. And the inheritance, um, sorry, it is inherited is set to true. Then the inheritance flag is set to container inherit and object inherit. And the propagation flag is set to none. All right, um, let's continue. We are going to remove the um, inheritance on this object and I can do that by taking my ACL variable and specifying the set access rule protection method and setting the is protected to true and the preserve inheritance to false since we would like to remove them. Okay, just running this command does not do anything. You need to use the set ACL commandlet to set the ACL. This is just changing the, the ACEs inside of that. So I need to use the ACE with a path and then the ACL object that I'd like to set. So if I run that and if I run my count again, you will notice that we do not have any ACEs associated to the directory. Okay, up next we are going to set ACLs. Um, I'll set three different ones. First of all, we're going to just get our ACL again, or the directory, the ACL to our directory. Then I am specifying the ACE permission. I am setting the domain administrator with my domain root. I'm giving him full control. He has container inherit and object inherit. He has no um, propagation. And I'm the ACE type is allow. And then once I've, that, I've got that, I'll set the new object or I'll create a new object uh, access rule with new object. Then the system security access control um, file system access rule. And I'm specifying my permission. So if I run that, then I can use the set access rule method to set this access rule or the set set the ACE. This does not set the ACL, ACL just yet. I'm just going to add two more. I've got one more for the system user account. I'm also giving him full control. Actually the same as the administrator account. And down at the bottom, I'm actually using my user account. So I'm specifying my DNS root, then my user account with the same account name, full control, container, inherit, object, inherit, no propagation, and allow. And then let me just run these commands. Okay, this does not set the ACL yet. And I can show you if I run this command, you will see that there's no ACLs set or ACEs set to the directory. 
The way to do this is to use the set AS ACL and then specify the path to the directory and then the ACL object. And that's all the ACEs that we've set up at the top. So if I run that and run the count again, you will notice that we now have three ACEs associated with the ACL on that directory. Okay, um, I am just going to show you, I'm just going to run this previous command with the built-in administrator. Um, that one does should not exist anymore. And as you can see, if I run that command, that does not exist. But if I run the same command for the system, it will actually give us the ACE that is associated with that user object. And that is the system object. Okay, up next um, we are going to check inheritance. So what we're going to do is we are going to create a new directory called documents within our home directory. Again we're going to specify the type as directory. Execute that, that just created the directory. Then I'm going to create an ACL variable from this directory. And now I'm going to show you what the inheritance on this object looks like. So if I run that, oops, that was a wrong command. I wanted to run this one. You can see that the inheritance is set to false because up at the top when we return or just when we just scroll up a bit, we set that we don't have any propagation for the user or for the system account. Okay. Now, I just need to find my spot again. There we go. Okay. And again, I'd just like to show you how many user rights are associated to that since we have got inheritance that actually shows up as inherited. Okay, up next I'm going to remove all the ACEs from the directory. And I can do that by first of all getting my home directory again. Then I am going to um, purge or use the purge access rule method on my ACE, ACL variable and I'm specifying that I would like to remove every single identity so I'm using the for each object and removing all the identities on that account. Okay up next nothing will happen if I don't specify the set ACL so I need to specify my set ACL to actually remove the ACLs or ACEs and if I run that you'll notice that nothing is associated with that directory anymore. Up next I'm going to remove um, an item or remove the, the directory. First of all I need to actually set those ACLs again that I have access to that folder. So I'm just going to say I'm going to create my ACLs so that I can remove the folder. Then I'm using the RM, which is the alias for remove, um, remove item, specifying my path. I'm specifying that it should recursively remove it. And I'm just confirming or saying that it should not confirm that it does not bring up any pop-ups. And there we go. I've safely removed my directory. Well, I hope you've enjoyed the session and I'm looking forward to our next one.